right, folks, welcome back to another budget gem or budget bust. Today, got another one here for you. This time, I have the MTX Road Thunder RT500D. Now, when you normally think of budget amplifiers, you don't typically think of MTX. MTX has been around for a long time. Um, I think they started entering the market in the early 80s. Um, back when I first started getting into car audio, MTX was typically um, one of the top two brands that you used to think of as making quality gear. Um, in fact, of the big chains, you know, you had Circuit City, you had Best Buy back in the late 90s, early 2000s. Circuit City rode the MTX horse and Best Buy ran the Rockford Fosgate horse. And those were basically, those are the two biggest big box stores selling car audio in any volume at that time. Um, notice I said Kicker wasn't in there. Kickers replaced Rockford Fosgate out of Best Buy. Um, so MTX used to be ones that used to put out solid gear. They still put out solid gear today. So imagine my surprise when I saw this amplifier for $85 brand new. <laughs> when Class D amps started being produced by MTX, a 500 watt Class D from MTX, um, those used to cost darn near three, $350 easily. So times have changed. Um, Road Thunder's always been their kind of budget series. Um, of course, you have the Road Thunders, you have the Thunder series, which goes all the way up to, I think they made the Thunder 9500 subwoofers, and the Thunder amplifiers, the Thunder Elite amplifiers, um, etc. So, Road Thunder's always been the budget. This one here, $85. Pretty incredible buy, in my opinion. If it lives up to its specs, we're going to find out what they are. Um, and speaking of those specs, this amplifier is rated at 250 watts at 4 ohms and 500 watts at 2 ohms. MTX is kind of known, known for underrating the amplifiers, and uh, I've always heard that. You know, Big D Wiz has done a couple of videos on MTX, the old school stuff. They've done that. They've always exceeded their ratings by quite a bit. Let's see if we live up to that with the Road Thunder. But first, let's unbox and let's see what you get for $85 in the box. Keep in mind, I did buy this from walmart.com. Um, probably not an authorized reseller of these um, because it actually came from not even Walmart, it came from VM Innovations. So you might not get a warranty with this. Just a disclaimer, but for still 85 bucks, MTX oh, still last. Okay, open her up. First thing, your Road Thunder manual. Pretty, pretty thick manual uh, in here. Of course, MTX, big company, a lot of different languages it's produced in. Um, you have some, these are not RCA cables, even though they have the ends. Uh, these are actually, looks like pretty nice grade, high level to low level adapters um, that you can plug into here. So that's pretty nice. Oh, since it dropped, your Allen key, so you can uh, set everything up on the amplifier. And of course, your remote base cable, or your remote gain knob, whatever you want to call it. And this is nice. I can already feel from the outside. This remote gain here, um, this is not El Cheapo, like I saw on those uh, sound streams and precision powers. This bad boy is full metal, so if you can hear it. Um, even the ears are metal, and there is also a power light on here as well. If you can kind of see there, not so bad, right there. So, not so bad, MTX. And last but not least, we have, dun -dun -dun -dun, the amplifier itself. Um, kind of a nice brush stainless look on the outside. And this is an engraved MTX Auto Audio logo over here. 
Um, this is not painted on like the, actually these are even em engraved as well, the Road Thunder um, in the RT500D, these are not painted on. So that's pretty nice. Um, we're gonna take a look at the controls and power terminals. Okay, your controls and your terminals are all located along this one side of the amplifier. Over here you have your speaker outputs, which is an eight gauge. As you can tell by this reducer, it fits in no problem. And over here are your power and ground terminals and your remote. Uh, these are four gauge each. And the one thing I don't like about this setup is I don't like having the ground and battery connections this close to each other. Um, there can be a risk of shorting out. You're gonna wanna probably use raw wire, um, or if you are gonna use a reducer like this, uh, make sure you wrap it in something so the metal doesn't touch each other. Otherwise, you're gonna have a bad day. Um, your fuse connections are right here. They're 25 amps a piece. Your RCA inputs, your input for your remote gain slash base knob. Uh, your gain control is here. It's adjustable from five volts to uh, 0.25 volts. Base boost zero to 12 dBs, which is pretty standard. Uh, something you don't normally see on a amp at this price point is a subsonic filter. Uh, and that's of course nice for you guys that like to run a ported setup. That is adjustable from 20 Hertz to 50 Hertz. And of course your low pass filter is here and that's adjustable from 40 Hertz all the way up to 200 Hertz. So pretty nice connection setup. All right, folks, uh, nothing left to do now but to put this amplifier, strap it up to the dyno, and see what kind of actual power this budget MTX Road Thunder RT500D can actually produce. Are we gonna have a winner at $85? Or are we gonna have a complete bust? I think we're gonna do okay. It is MTX after all. Let's check it out. Got a problem, folks. I got a bad battery. I uh, don't have any more nine volt batteries. Uh, that's what these AMM1 takes take. Um, I don't know what to do. Never mind. I do know what to do. One second. Yeah, I think this will do. thoughts on the MTX Audio RT500D. As you saw on the numbers, it exceeded its ratings. Uh, crushed the 4 ohm rating. Over 50% more power at 4 ohm certified than what's on the box. That's very, very nice. Um, and over 10% more certified power at 2 ohms. So, very nicely underrated amplifier. 
Um, as you saw in the uncertified numbers, we got in the 380s at 4 ohms, we got uh, in the 600s, low 600s at 2 ohms. Dynamically, we got uh, almost 400 watts at 4 ohms and uh, right around 620 at 2 ohms. Pretty solid performer. Um, if there is a downside to this amplifier, it's going to be its efficiency. It's not very efficient. Um, I'll do the math here and it'll show up right on camera here in the results, but I'm calculating roughly in my head 57, 58%. So with a 500 watt, 600 watt roughly amplifier, uh, pulling 73 amps, it still will be fine on stock electrical. It's just, I mean, it is a budget amplifier. Um, even though it's MTX, it's still their budget line. So I think they were looking at how do we keep the price point down? How do we keep the watts up? So in that standpoint, nice job MTX. We have a budget gem here for you folks in every sense of the word. And uh, our very first 81 performer on the new amp dyno. So this is the one that breaks it in. So <laughs> welcome to the gem list MTX. Um, that's it for me for now, folks. Uh, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Till then, I got more amps to test.